wastewater committee meeting from the 16th. We discussed the AMR project and the Young Street and Ceiling Street projects and uh, fire hydrant replacement. That was we talked about the uh, the process and what we would need to go through to apply for 2016 CDBG grant funds. Yes. Uh, and to get that, get all those, uh, get all our ducks in a row so that next year we can be applying for funds to fix our water and sewer lines through CDBG. And I think that was the, we did have some minor discussions about the uh, water rate conversion that we have been undergoing and that there are a certain, there are a few classes of uh, Customers that we have not adjusted a rate on at all, and what that would look like if we made that adjustment. Does council have any questions for Mr. Fisher or Mr. Dunn? Anybody else from the committee, I guess? I didn't ask that with sanitation, but we can do that too. What kind of class, what classification have we not established? Uh, we have not done the rate conversion to the progressive rate for uh, governmental for governmental agencies, which would be the college, uh, the the prison, the public, school. public schools, and some of those entities. And we have had conversations with those. Uh, I've had conversations as to what that rate could look like with all those entities. Um, but we haven't moved forward with it in making any kind of conversion on it. Any other questions from the council? See, is the Alba Recreation Board meeting from February 17th, Councilman Fisher? Most of our discussion was about the uh, approval of the master plan, which was approved. Pretty much the main the main discussion at the meeting. Does anybody have any questions for Councilman Fisher regarding the recreation complex? Item D, tourism tax meeting from February 17th. Well, uh, according to their minutes, they had two uh, two discussion and action items. Uh, for funding, one was for $25,000 to fund wayfinding signage, uh, and the other was uh, $20,433 to Oklahoma Today for advertising, and both of those items were approved. Anybody have any questions for the council regarding the tourism tax meeting? Item E, the Chapter 12 business ordinance meeting from March 1st. Councilman Benson, do you have a report to share? We, we talked a lot about uh, the ordinance some more, and we kind of gave... Joe Don some direction on what we were thinking as a committee, and he's trying to put some some uh, <laughs> order to that. We we compared a lot of uh, other towns' ordinances with what we have, and, and we came up with some ideas of our own, and we're trying to get that all put together in some kind of a uh, orderly fashion, so we can look at it better. And, Council, have any questions for Mr. Benson? Randy, do you have anything that you need to add to that? I think we made a lot of progress trying to simplify things, and, and where it doesn't necessarily become out of date once something changes elsewhere, you know, things where we don't have to revisit that a lot. You know, they've got a lot of old language as far as some of the things that were in there from ages ago. I think we made a lot of progress to 
Discussion on a couple of current projects, uh, the PMR, transfer station payments, uh, payments to the uh, uh, engineers for the uh, runway, for the taxiway extension at the airport. Uh, had, a, had a discussion, quite a bit of our discussion went around what we talked about on Saturday at the retreat and looking at the budget process, um, department heads have been notified. Uh, time they've got to start putting together their uh, budget and project proposals. Uh, we should have that by the end of April. And uh, then the Finance Committee will start reviewing that with uh, Joe Dawn and putting together the budget for the next fiscal year. That would be the bulk of what we talked about. Council, have any questions? What kind of guidelines have we given the department heads as far as reduction or anything? I haven't given any specific guidelines for reductions. Uh, kind of wanted to see what they brought forward first after what we had talked about as far as the current finance funding that we are going to be looking at for next year. Um, I think we'll evaluate each individual department as it comes in as to whether or not they're being whether the request is reasonable. Uh, the other thing we've talked about is that any kind of capital item that is brought forward certainly needs to go toward the accomplishments of the priorities that were set with that were set on Saturday. Mayor's report. Um, I just want to reiterate, like I said on Saturday, that I uh, appreciate the uh, council members and the staff for uh, participating in our first uh, you know, business retreat. I think it's uh, important to take these first steps as we go. Can we learn some things. Yes, we learn some things. We have some things that we need to work on, absolutely. Um, but uh, it was a uh, good opportunity. I'm glad we did it to, to get. Uh, some steps moving in the right direction for comprehensive planning, um, which is still uh, a priority that I'd like to see us uh, move towards as well. So um, that would conclude my report. Anybody has any questions? All right. Uh, item H, business city business manager's report. Mr. Dunn. Well, first, I'd like to make a few comments about Saturday. Uh, I thought the street went very well. Uh, I've had a lot of positive talk, uh, feedback from the department heads that were there and how much they appreciate being able to uh, have a non-threatening way, form of communication and interaction and an honest interaction with the council members. Uh, they they were appreciative of the, appreciative of that and appreciated the ability to be able to put, make their input. Uh, they would certainly like to see that continue. I'm sure. Uh, talked about some of the things. Let's talk about some of the things that I've got in the report. One is the phone bills. It will be a once we go to the new system or the new rates. As we're discussing with uh, AT&T, our phone bill will be moving from six approximately $6,400 a month to about $1,800 a month. Um, city as a whole, this will be an estimated $50,000 savings, annual savings. Yeah, a huge, a huge impact for us. Uh, 
back in December, or back in October, I guess, we talked with the Finance Committee and some of the other council members about uh, applying for the uh, Citizens Leadership Academy and being a host, uh, host city. Everybody uh, agreed that it would be a very beneficial thing for the city to try to try to do. Um, we were selected for to be the host city for the December 2016 Citizens Academy Leadership Training Program class. <laughs> Uh, what this will mean is that the city of Alva will help provide, uh, not, ne not necessarily help pay for all of it, but help provide for the uh, coordination of meeting space, uh, places for people to stay, because typically people come in the night before. We will help with the coordination and providing for meals for the Friday night or the Thursday night that they are uh, before the meeting, along with some entertainment. The meetings will be held Friday. We will help coordinate with some lunches and uh, provide some bus tours in the afternoon of the, of the uh, class. They'll probably be, this will bring approximately 40 individuals into our community who will be staying overnight and hopefully spending some sales tax money when they leave. Uh, that we met on the 24th with uh, K Curbside Recycling uh, to discuss their program. This they offer a curbside pickup for recycling that they build. If a customer, if a citizen is interested in it, they can certainly contract to have uh, curbside recycling. There are some other some other events that they will this organization will help with, such as electronic recycling and one-time events that are no out-of-pocket for anybody. They just need a place to set up. This would certainly be a good start for any kind of uh, recycling that we may want to try to implement here in Albert. Uh, work is progressing on Murray Drive and Sunset on this corner. Project should be wrapping up by the end of the week, and that after that, staff will is scheduled to start the uh, on tearing out and replacing the corner of Tenth and Flint. Uh, as that uh, wraps up, as that project comes closer in division, we ensure that it will start the Tenth and Flint project. We will be sending out notices to the schools and to uh, the area residents so that they are aware. The, uh, today, the city of Alva issued a demolition permit for 613 barns. I believe that's the correct address. Um, the building next to the senior citizens. Uh, OG&E has to remove a service line and a tree in the back has to be removed. Um, once that is done, they'll be able to start demolition. And it, yeah, there may be some extra cleaning work that needs to be done for the facade of the building, whether or not that stays or whether or not that goes away. But that, that demolition permit was issued today. So they should be moving forward on that relatively quickly. I did send out an email on the 24th to the council members concerning the uh, water heaters at the homestead. It looks like we will be needing to replace at least one of these water heaters this budget year. <coughs> Currently we're working on getting prices for the water heater and somebody to come in and take out the old water heater and install a new. Um, <coughs> price range for this looks like it will be Probably around total total replacement cost should be around twenty to twenty-five thousand per water heater. Uh, with some research that Councilman Melton has done and informed us about, uh, about ten thousand of that is expected to be the cost of the water heater that's being recommended. And that would be my report at this time. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Yes, 
decided the question to go down. But now is that a complete demolition of that building? Except for possibly some retaining the facade, the front facade, but they, uh, it is for complete demolition and removal. Citizens will be very pleased. I was very pleased when I heard that we got the permit in today because we've been after them about what they were going to do. Who's the entity that's going to do the demo? I believe they have contracted with uh, Jackson. Any other questions from the council for Mr. Dunham? Well, I'd also like to state on the uh, water heater deal since I'm kind of in that business. Um, the removal of the old is considered demolition and can be done by non-licensed people. So actually the hospital maintenance staff could remove those, which would save some additional cost from hiring the plumber. Any other question, comment regarding the business manager's report? Number seven. Thank you, General. Item number seven is discussion and action to expand the role of the council appointees who are reviewing Chapter 12 business of the City of Alva ordinances to review all the City of Alva ordinances for applicability and make any recommendations for change which may be required. Uh, this was on the last agenda, and uh, we discussed it uh, somewhat at that time. The summary on the back is kind of the purpose of that committee and uh, possible recommended you know approach to how that committee would function but essentially um, we tabled it to, to get more of the council here to, to vote on it um, the uh, purpose would be to hopefully prevent the occurrence of, of obsolete uh, or inappropriate uh, codes within our uh, code of ordinances and uh, establish the, the committee as a standing committee to, to function um, on a regular basis, uh, reviewing, uh, not necessarily changing, but at least laying eyes on saying we've looked at our ordinances at least once every um, so often. Um, I would say probably you know, three to five years or being the number in the middle. Expand the role of the committee that's been set up to look up the look at the other ordinances and do any action that we feel need to bring it to the council. Does that include the two uh, business people? Business people, or just the three council people? I would say that it would include. Um, people from our community depending on the code you're reviewing. So but not the, necessarily the two that's on there now. Right. Okay. Um, it would, you know, if you're, depending on the code you're reviewing, there may be some people in our community that are better suited to discuss the, the nature of that code than, than others, and I would want the, the chairman in that committee to have the latitude to be able to choose those people. Second. 
have a motion from Councilman Benson, or Stelling, a second by Councilman Benson, to expand the role of council appointees who are reviewing Chapter 12 business of the City of Alba ordinances to review all City of Alba ordinances for applicability and making a recommendation for change which may be required as discussed. Um, is there any further discussion? Please call the vote. Stelling. Yes. Benson. Yes. Hannaford. Yes. Miller. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Melton. Yes. Valencia. Yes. Thank you. Item number eight is discussion and authorization to purchase 14 Greenway Series solar lights and poles from Seoul in the amount of $41,248. This is being brought forward because this is certainly above the spending limits that have been set for the city manager and staff per the uh, purchasing ordinance that was passed last year. What we will be doing, this is a grant, it is fully funded. Uh, these, this purchase, the $41,248, will be fully funded by the grant uh, from TSET. It will include 14 lots. Uh, 14 aluminum poles, uh, 25 watt LED luminary, uh, 160 watt solar panels, two gel ba gel cell batteries for the per, per fixture, uh, controllers, uh, complete wireless harnesses and battery box and solar pa solar panel mounting brackets. This is. Uh, the original grant that we applied for was for $50,000, and TSEC did, did uh, award us forty five. dollars like I said, that has already been received, and we just need to proceed with the project. There, uh, we were talking with local contractors to actually do the pole setting and the installation of the equipment. And we'll have a little additional expense there, but that would be that would be considered our match for this grant. Um, again, anything over forty, anything over the forty-one to the forty-five is certainly paid for by the grant. Uh, anything over that, which we do not have quotes on, we do not have quotes on that portion of it yet. We have talk, talked to uh, local contractors about doing it. They are willing and able to do it. Um, and we'll get prices to see how we need to, need to proceed with that portion of it after we have ordered the lights. There is about a six to eight week delivery time on the, on the, light, on the lights and poles. state that if it helps any, I would donate the use of my SkyTrack to help set the poles. And also, I'd go ahead and like to move to authorize the purchase of the 14 Greenway Series solar lights and poles from Seoul in the amount of $31,248. Second. We do need small work at Hill Park. Along the road or different places? Different places that uh, allow it in different areas, mainly kind of along the road. Right now, along the roads and with playground areas are at to kind of give some illumination there uh, with the idea that we may expand that later. Did the grant specifically sell you solar light? When we specifically applied for solar light. Um, one of the reasons for that is we were evaluating the uh, the cost of installation of wire and the aesthetics of wire versus non-wire. This is not part of, the, whereas the usage, if we went wire, if we wired it in, the usage could probably be applied toward our uh, franchise agreement with OG&E, but the lights, because this is not a roadway, I do not believe we would, they would pay for any of the installation costs or the pole in any of the lights. We'd have to buy the uh, transformer, similar to what we've had to do out, of Hatfield, out at the rec center. And more recently, when we were redoing the concrete out there, we've had to pay about $4,000 just to raise a transformer out there. 
uh, would not be unreasonable that the transfer would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. And then whether or not it would be an underground or overhead with the wires kind of leads to what could happen at the park. If you went overhead, you may certainly start limiting what could be used. I mean, I, I don't know that the kids go down there and fly their kites now, but they certainly wouldn't be able to fly their kites around those around those uh, electrical lines. But then do you need to have lights down to the park now? I talked to Monty, and he said that he'd like to see get rid of because he said there's some wood poles he has to climb individually. So I think I'm going to go. The structure's already there for it. I'm just thinking we're looking kind of a black hole where any any maintenance past, I mean, yeah, we've got to pay for insulation, but any maintenance, say someone shoots out a light or say the solar panels have to, we ever have the hailstorm and stuff, where it's going to be on us to repair. Well, if, but if that those lights aren't on the grid system now, I think if they have done maintenance on them in the past. They've done it because we have had a good relationship with um, OG&E. There are street lights in town that OG&E won't fix because there are our responsibility. And I think whether they, if, if it's my opinion that if those lights in Hatfield Park were shot out or the uh, sensors went out on them, they would still be up to us to replace. I asked him mean, a little bit alone about Monty, but he said that, say it was an individual put in a light, say like the lights that go east of town that are on the highway, they're 9,500 9, lumens. He said if we, if you put in a metal pole and the light, it would cost uh, under $15 a month. Say this individual would actually do it, it would cost $15 a month. I pay for electricity plus I mean they'll they put them in, they're gonna take care of them. As Monty said he goes down there now, they take care of them. But uh, you buy that into the forty one thousand, that would last us almost seventeen years. I mean uh, you actually bought the pipe yeah. for the fifteen dollars a month. And what I'd say is that uh Monty may take care of some of them now. The ones that I have asked to be repaired, some of the lights that I have asked to be repaired and sensors that um uh, up around the college and up around traffic signals, OG&E has told me no, they will not do that. Those are ours and those are our responsibility. And they won't come in there and do it. And that's what I'm basing my opinion on. Will these lights be able to be deactivated during special events? Yes. I do have a motion by Councilman Melton and second by Dr. Hannaford to authorize the purchase of 14 green <coughs> series solar lights and poles from Seoul in the amount of $41,248. Is there any further discussion? Please call the vote. Melton? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Valencia? Yes. Miller? Yes. Stelling? No. Benson? Yes. And Fisher. Yes. Item number nine is discussion and action to purchase. Uh, discuss and ask action to purchase of a police utility interceptor pursuit vehicle from the Oklahoma State purchasing contract in the amount of twenty-eight thousand seven dollars from Washburn Ford. Again, this is certainly above the twenty-five thousand dollar limit that I that has been given to me. So that's the reason it's on the agenda. Uh, this is a budgeted purchase. Uh, we had anticipated taking the, purchasing this vehicle at the beginning of this budget year out of the um, Alba Police Department drug fund, as we have vehicles in the past. There is a total of $37,000 budgeted for the uh, purchase of the vehicle. The vehicle that we're asking to purchase is the police interceptor utility vehicle similar to the last vehicle we purchased. Um, it will be purchased locally for 20, uh, in the amount of $28,000, which is the uh, state contract from Washington for, 
we will end up having to buy about another $5,800 to fit the car with lights and radios um, and these sort of items after purchase, which would bring the total purchase price up to about, uh, about $34,000, which is about $3,000 less than what the budget was for this purchase. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions about this. Are there any items from the next number 10 that can be taken out of the Dodge Charger and used in the new vehicle? Yes, there will be items that will be um, salvaged out of the, the vehicle will last into the player surplus that will be utilized. Uh, there will also be items that we'll just salvage out of it in case we have similar items go bad on something on another vehicle that we can replace. So the lights on the uh, vehicle will last a surplus should this one be approved. We will salvage out the radios, the lights, um, any of the equipment that's in it that could be reutilized by the city of Alba in uh, other police cars or other vehicles. Mayor, I move to purchase a police utility interceptor pursuit vehicle from the Oklahoma State purchasing contract in the amount of $28,007 from Washburn Ford. Second. <coughs> I have a motion from Councilman Valencia, second by Councilman Melton, to purchase a police utility interceptor pursuit vehicle from the Oklahoma State purchasing contract in the amount of $28,007 from Washburn Ford. Is there any further discussion? Please call the vote. Valencia? Yes. Melton? Yes. Benson? Yes. Miller? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Hanover? Yes. Stella? Yes. Item 10 is discussion and action to declare surplus and authorize the disposal of one 2009 Dodge Charger police car, VIN number 2B3KA3TX9HG20030. This vehicle is um, got a bad cylinder in it. Uh, it requires about $5,000 worth of repairs. We don't feel like this car is um, a benefit to the city of Alva any longer. It's a treasure somebody else should own. We will uh, take the equipment off that needs to be uh, salvaged off of the vehicle, and we will be offering the vehicle for sale at, uh, at a surplus auction that we're in the process of preparing, whether that's an actual auction or whether that's a sealed bid or whether we post it online. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but it would be one of those one of those three. Anyone care to make a motion on this treasure? I would move to declare surplus and authorize the disposal of one 2009 Dodge Charger police car as identified in the item title. Thank you. I have a motion by Councilman Valencia, second by Dr. Hannaford. Two, declare surplus and authorize the disposal of 2009 Dodge Charger police car with the stated VIN number. Is there any further discussion? Please call the vote. Valencia. Yes. Hannaford. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Benson. Yes. Stelling. Yes. Melton. Yes. Miller. Yes. Item 11 is discussion and action to enter into executive session pursuant to Title 25, Section 307B of the Open Meeting Act. Item A, pursuant to Title 25, Section 307B-1, discussion on the employment evaluation of City, Man City Business Manager Joe Don Dunham. Item B, pursuant to Title 25, Section 307B2, discussion concerning IAFF, Local 3782, Alva, Oklahoma. There be a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Have a motion by Councilman Fisher, second by Count, excuse me, motion by Councilman Benson, a second by Councilman Fisher to enter into executive session. Title 25, Section 307B of the Open Meeting Act for the discussion of the employment uh, contract with the city business manager and the firefighters union contract. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question of council? Yes. 
both of those can be put under the same yes. action item? Yes, they're identified that way. They have to be voted on separately if there's any action taken in the, in the regular session. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Will we be able to pull Joe Donk back in for the second part of the call? Okay. Please call the vote. Benson. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Stelling. Yes. Mountain. Yes. Valencia. Yes. Hannaford. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, I would like to ask the council members, Mr. Cunningham and the clerk, to remain. We'll call her interest regarding negotiations with IAFF Local 3782 Alva, Oklahoma. There being no action to take, we'll move on to item 15. <coughs> Remarks and inquiries by citizens. Public, public comment will be limited two minutes per speaker. Speaker must identify himself or herself. Thank you all for being here. Is there any comment that you would like to share with the council? There being none, we'll move on to item 16, remarks and inquiries by council members. Council? All right, we'll close the meeting of the Alva City Council and open the meeting of the Alva Utility Authority. Will the clerk please call the roll? Miller. Here. Melton. Here. Benson. Here. Eckhart. Valencia. Here. Fisher? Here. Stelling? Here. Hannaford? Here. Item 3 is discussion and action on the consent agenda. All of the following items which concern reports and items of a routine nature normally approved at AUA meetings will be approved by one vote of the authority. Any trustee desiring an, to discuss an item on the consent agenda may request that it be removed from the consent agenda and placed for discussion as the next item on the regular agenda. It will then be considered separately. The consent agenda consists of the consideration and action on the following items. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of February 16, 2016, and approval of claims in the amount of $183,354.63, and payroll expenses of $49,831.73. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Miller, second by Dr. Hannaford, to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Please call the vote. Miller. Yes. Hanford. Yes. Stelling. Yes. Vinson. Yes. Valencia. Yes. Melton. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Thank you. We'll close the meeting of the Alva Utility Authority and open the meeting of the Alva Economic Development Authority. Will the clerk please call the roll? Melton. Here. Hanford. Here. Stelling. Here. Miller. Here. Eckhart. Vinson. Here. Valencia. Here. Fisher. Here. Item 3 is discussion and action on the consent agenda. All of the following items which concern reports and items of a routine nature normally approved at ADDA meetings will be approved by one vote of the board. Any trustee desiring to discuss an item on the consent agenda may request that it be removed from the consent agenda and placed for discussion as the next item on the regular agenda. It will then be considered separately. The consent agenda consists of the consideration and action on the following items. Item A, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of February 16, 2016. And item B, approval of claims in the amount of $62,263.87 and payroll expenses of $11,260.31. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Miller, second by Dr. Hannaford, to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Please call the vote. Miller. Yes. Hanford. Yes. Valencia. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Mountain. Yes. Benson. Yes. Stelling. Yes. Thank you all. We will have a public safety.